Um, so this is Tucker Carlson um, about the uh, the leak of uh, top secret uh, documents uh, by uh, by this young guy, uh, this twenty one year old. And uh, uh, first, I, he's going to talk about kind of what these documents, what we've learned from these documents, and and I want to focus on that first because look. Um, Tucker Carlson has become a bold-faced liar. Um, he, 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 he has divorced himself completely uh, from the truth. The truth just has no standing, I don't think, anymore in his mind. Um, he says, and he spins, and he interprets the news uh, in a way that appeals to his audience, and that is really all he cares about. And, and he plays... I think to certain political wins that um, that are consistent with his view, but but literally, uh, he has divorced himself completely from the truth. I I, I think uh, this has become uh, this is maybe most evident in um, in uh, the uh, you know I've I've documented this uh, with with the January sixth and other stuff, but maybe the most evident example of this is really. Uh, what we what we're learning uh, from the emails and texts uh, from Tucker Carlson and others at Fox, but in particular Tucker Carlson, around the um, uh, around the the claims of the false of the stolen election around 2020, what they thought of it, what they believed about it, um, and then what they've actually said, and and this is all coming uh, to the forefront as a consequence of. Um, uh, uh, of the Dominion lawsuit, and we'll hear a lot more about that because uh, it, it, I think the trial in front of a jury starts tomorrow. Uh, but but Tucker Carlson has been revealed in in those emails and those texts to be a bold faced liar, and of course the January sixth stuff is is uh, is obviously part of that, um, or not part of that, but but is is also you know, and I've shown other videos where he, other videos maybe where it wasn't so much that he's a bold faced liar, but, but where he's just stupid. I don't know. Just, just ignorant, stupid, uh, evasive. Uh, my favorite of all the videos I've ever shown of Tucker Carlson is the one where he talks about American greatness, what makes America great, and it was scenery and God. Scenery and God are what the things that make American great. Uh, you know, we have a beautiful country. We have a God-fearing country. Those are the two things that make America great. That is so insane and so disgusting. Uh, but anyway. Um, and it's not, it's not it, 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 you know, so uh, so that's Tucker Carlson. But uh, this is uh, this is an extension of the a story I talked about with you yesterday. I think it was about Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is they are now the same the same part of the political spectrum. Tucker Carlson and Marjorie Taylor Greene are both part of the nutty right, the nutty right, and um, uh, their attitude towards uh, the revelations around these top secret documents which are, are, are very different, and I'll talk about this, very different than Snowden. Um, in, in, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so revealing of their soul. It's so revealing of their politics. It's so revealing of their view of the world. It is, uh, it is, it, it is truly, truly uh, horrific. By the way, uh, let me know about the audio, if, if the audio is good. I'm still playing around with the settings here. So I, I think it's fine, but but let me know if it's too loud, too soft, too crazy, whatever. Uh, the music is still wrong. The opening sequence, uh, uh, at least in my headphones, sounds completely wrong. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's the headphones. Maybe it's the settings of the headphone. I don't know. But um, other than that, it, it, just let me know if the audio is good. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate the support. All right, let's jump in. So. Tucker Carlson is basically uh, talking here about uh, what the documents revealed. He says, he opens up the segment, I won't, I won't go through that, but he says basically, uh, we've been told two realities about the Ukraine war. One, that this is a war between Ukraine and Russia, not a war between the United States and Russia. The United States um, is not a party to this war. He says that's one truth we have been told by the mainstream media and by our politicians. And the second uh, thing that we've been told by the mainstream media and by a politician is that Ukraine is winning that war, which, which is bizarre because certainly early on in the war, we were told Ukraine would lose by everybody, everybody in, uh, in the media, particularly in the mainstream media. Um, and, um, uh, but 
yes, more recently, Ukraine has been perceived as winning or at least uh, uh, not losing anymore. And there's a big difference between not losing and winning. I, I don't know anybody who says that U Ukraine is definitely going to win this war or Ukraine is definitely winning this war in a sense of kicking the Russians out of Ukraine. But it's certainly the momentum shifted and the momentum has been on the Ukrainian side uh, for the last, uh, since the first few months of the war. Um, I've, had, I've said that, a lot of people said that, and that's the truth. Anyway, Tucker doesn't think, it thinks that these documents have shown that both of these things uh, are wrong, are wrong. Uh, uh, Tucker Carlson, somebody says he used to be with Cato. Yes, I mean, he used to be a bow tie um, libertarian. He used to be a like, conservative libertarian type. He used to be pro-free markets, no more. He used to be uh, a pro-American, no more. He used to have a, a certain understanding of the founding fathers and the founding principles of this country, no more. He has basically abandoned uh, America and embraced, uh, you know, it, it, first of all, embraced his audience, which is which his audience is not, I, I don't think, a, a, a fundamentally pro-American audience, uh, but he, he's embraced um, the the nationalist, superficial, uh, conspiracy theory laden view of America. Um, and what he really has embraced, and, and we'll see this, what he's really embraced is if the left holds a certain view, I'm against it. Uh, so he's embraced the, no matter what, we have to be against the left. He's embraced the hate the left at all costs, nothing else matters. That's the view he's embraced, and that's the view, sadly, uh, much of the Republican Party has, bra uh, has embraced, and many, uh, many uh, uh, conservatives have embraced. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, the view, uh, that's the view that we have. Um, it's a view that he has. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, cool, so let's, let's play this. I, I gave you the context, and let's, let's play this. Let me know if, if you can hear him well or if there's any problem with his view. Oh, ...began to show up, among other places, on Twitter. And the slides show that this is, in fact, not Ukraine's war. It's our war. The United States is a direct combatant in a war against Russia. Now, this is a bold-faced lie. The slides do not show that. They do not show any um, combat between the United States and Russia. They do not show American troops engaged in any combat activities with the Russians. This is just, um, this is just complete. Let me just adjust the volume. Out. I, I reduced the volume a little bit. You'll have to tell me if that's better. Um, uh, you know, that's just not true. It, it, what is true is as part of a uh, NATO, it looks like a NATO, European and American um, a special forces uh, grouping that is primarily there to train uh, Ukrainians and potentially to provide some intelligence from the back. Um, uh, there are some American Special Forces troops there. There, there are American Special Forces troops, my guess, I'm guessing now, I have no intelligence or knowledge. My guess is there's some in Special Forces troops in parts of Russia. There's probably Special Forces troops of America in... We know that there are American troops in 120 different countries. Yes, there are troops, American troops in Ukraine. There is zero evidence, and the slides that he is referring to do not show, do not show, Americans engaged in combat, American engaged in, in, in any kind of host, you know, uh, any kind of live fire conflict with the Russian. What they show again is what we know. They're training and supporting the Ukrainians. We know the United States is providing, providing intelligence to Ukraine. It pisses off the Russians to no end. The special forces troops there are there to provide intelligence. They provide maybe they're helping with strategy. That's not a surprise. But the idea that the United States is engaged in fighting with Russia is just a lie to try to rile up his audience to be even more against this war. Ultimately, with the goal, which Tucker has embraced completely, of supporting Putin. Uh, uh, you, you know, Tucker has, is clearly on the side of, uh, you know, uh, 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 Putin and basically right-wing authoritarians, uh, whether it's um, uh, Orban or Putin, uh, who embrace religion and who 
share with Tucker. What do they share with Tucker? What is the one thing that unites them all? Hatred of the left. It's the really thing the only the really the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters is hatred of the left. And since Putin hates the left, he must be a good guy. And since Orban hates the left, he must be a good guy. All right, so back to Tucker. No, he, he's not talking about support. He's not. He's talking about the United States, you know, being at war, that these documents show the United States at war with Russia. Again, both place, unequivocal lie. It's war. It's our war. The United States is a direct combatant in a war against Russia, as we see. Direct combatant. Direct combatant. <laughs> Speak, American soldiers are fighting Russian soldiers. American soldiers are fighting Russian soldiers? Proof? Evidence? Uh, maybe you, you're very good at, at taking documents and showing us uh, out of context quotes from those documents. Where are the documents? Documents are uh, out there. They've been leaked. They're floating around the web. Why, why is there no document showing proof that American troops are in direct combat operations with Russian troops? Because such a statement does not exist. So this is not a regional conflict in Eastern Europe. This is a hot war between the two primary nuclear superpowers on Earth. So this is, again, a talking point of the right. Um, we can't piss off the Russians. God, we can't piss off the Russians. Because, hey, the Russians have nukes, and they will use the nukes, and we need to be afraid of them. These, these are the conservatives. These are the conservatives who used to... Uh, you know, rally around supporting Reagan, calling them an evil empire, around uh, supporting standing up to evil and standing up to bad guys. But uh, it, uh, really, the shift happened, I think, a big shift happened when, when uh, you know, Donald Trump uh, went and, and uh, uh, almost hugged the, the, the leader of North Korea, uh, uh, called him his friend, uh, romance, uh, all of this. Uh, who cares about the thuggery, who cares about the fact that they have uh, weapons and, and threaten the United States? No, 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 no. We like these guys. These guys are good guys, and we can negotiate with them because they hate the left. That's right. That's all that you need. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm, I, I, I'm convinced that the brutal dictator of North Korea hates the left. All right. And yet this war has never been formally declared. It has not been authorized by Congress. And for there that is no reason, war. this war is a violation of American law. It is a crime. There is no law. There is no war and there is no crime. Um, it, it, Congress has approved um, in its budgets uh, legally. You might not approve of it. We might not think it's a good thing, but Congress has approved legally uh, allocations of money and weapons to Ukraine that has been part of the defense budget. Uh, so, I mean, again, there is no war between the United States and Russia. Not yet, anyway. Maybe there will be. Nothing yet. The second thing we learn from these slides is that despite direct U.S. involvement, Ukraine is, in fact, losing the war. Again, nothing in these documents show that Ukraine is losing the war. What these documents show is that Ukraine's in trouble, that Ukraine has a particular shortage of uh, ground-to-air missiles, that Ukraine is right now in a stalemate with Russia. Um, it does not show Ukraine losing the war. Indeed, it, it shows much more so, if you read the documents and if you scan the the, all of the documents, that Russia is indeed has lost the war. It's already lost the war. I've explained how Russia has lost the war. Even if it ends today with Russia occupying vast territories within Ukraine, Russia has lost the war because it has uh, basically allowed NATO to expand. It is created Ukrainian nationalism that is going to live on for generations. It's, it's uh, bonded Ukraine to Europe in a way that Ukraine was never bonded to Europe. It makes it much more likely for Ukraine to join the European Union and to maybe even become a, a, a member of NATO uh, in spite of uh, Russia's, in, in, from any respect, from any strategic respect, Russia has not achieved a single one of its goals. Indeed, it has taken massive setbacks. I've explained the fact that Finland now has joined NATO. Finland has a much, 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 much longer border. Indeed, the border of uh, NATO's border with, uh, with Russia has more than doubled because of the size of the, of the, um, of, of the Finnish border with, uh, with Russia. Finland and, and potentially in a few months Sweden 
much more important NATO members and much bigger threat NATO members to Russia than Ukraine could ever be. So, no, strategically, from every strategic perspective, Russia has lost this war. It has devastated its economy. Its economy is in shambles. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's just not true. They're running massive deficits, which they cannot finance. Um, and they are, they are desperately selling oil in the markets uh, at huge discounts. Uh, they are struggling in every respect. Uh, the Russians have lost many more troops than the Ukrainians. You'll see in a minute Tucker Carlson lying about that as well. Um, and um, Ukraine isn't winning. That is true. Not yet, anyway. Uh, the momentum was theirs in the win this winter. The momentum is stalemate. Basically, there's a stalemate across the entire front. But remember, um, Kharkiv and uh, Gerson, uh, that were occupied by the Russians, were liberated by the Ukrainians in the fall uh, in, in dramatic fashion, and in fashion that nobody, including Tucker Carlson or anybody, expected. But the most important thing is not what I think. The most important thing is that Tucker is lying. That is, none of these ideas that Ukraine is losing the war um, is in the documents. Y Ukraine has a problem, uh, uh, a munition problem, in, in particular in its uh, ground-to-air missile capabilities. But remember, from day one, the, quote, experts believed Ukraine would crumble and that Russia would take them over very quickly. Seven Ukrainians are being killed for every Russian. That's just absolutely not true, not in the documents and not true. Now, it is true that these documents were doctored by the Russians, and there is a version of these documents that was put out by the Russians on Russian Telegram after clearly they had changed the numbers. Now, you would think that an American journalist, the most watched journalist in America, would know this, that an American journalist on the most watched show in America would check his facts, would actually say, this is Russian propaganda. But no, Tucker Carlson has become a spokesman for Russian propaganda. He has become a tool of the Russians. And as a consequence, he is just mouthing off Russian propaganda. He's mouthing off numbers, stats, that are purely Russian. Every number I've seen, reported by every intelligence agency I've seen out there in the world, shows that the Russians have lost many more troops than the Ukrainians. Now, there's ambiguity about the numbers. It could be that the Ukrainians have lost more troops than people are assessing. It could be that the Russians are a little bit less, but seven to one is a bold-faced, unequivocal lie. Lie. And, you know, these people need to be called out on their lies. We're very good at calling out the left when they lie about economics, about slavery, about the past, about whatever. We need to be just as equally bold in calling out Tucker Carlson when he lies. Ukrainian air defenses have been utterly degraded. They haven't been utterly degraded. They are running out of ammo. They're running out of the missiles. But the Patriot missiles, the Patriot system that Ukraine now has has not been damaged. It just, it needs more ammo. And the rest of the Ukrainian air defense systems need more ammo. But... Remember, Ukraine, as compared to Russia, had no military, had very little, very small military at the beginning of this war. Russia had a, the mightiest military, the second most powerful military in the world, supposedly. Um, Russia still, still, what's this, a year and three months, two months into the war, still does not have control of the skies of Ukraine. Why is that? If it's true, as Tucker Carlson tells us, that uh, the Ukrainian air defense system is utterly being degraded, then why isn't Russia controlling the airspace above Ukraine? Which they are not. It's because uh, the Ukrainians still have an air defense system that is knocking uh, uh, Russian airplanes out of the sky, which is stunning to me. Stunning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not an expert in military strategy, but I know that the first thing you do uh, before you launch a ground attack or, or while you're launching a ground attack is take out the entire air defense system of your opponent and take down the airplane so you establish air superiority. And the fact that the Russians couldn't do that is maybe the biggest testament for the weakness, for the weakness of the Russian military 
uh, 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 of anything else other, you know, uh, they, they couldn't get a superiority. That's because they're playing suck, to put it mildly. And uh, Ukraine has a Western weaponry that the Russians don't know how to deal with. Um, I'll just note that uh, the West, I, I guess the only exemplar of this is Israel. Israel has always dealt really, really well with uh, Russian air defense systems. They've always neutralized those. They've always managed to find ways not to have the airplanes knocked out of the sky by Soviet, by, by Russian and Soviet uh, air defense systems. Uh, it, 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 superior Western technology. Superior Western technology. All right, let's see what else Tucker has Ukraine to say. Ukraine is losing. The Biden administration is perfectly aware of this. They're panicked about it, but they have lied about this fact to the public. Just two weeks ago, for example, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin told the U.S. Senate that Russian military power is, quote, waning. Now That's a fact. By the way, that is a absolute unequivocal fact. I'm no fan of the Secretary of Defense or of Biden or anybody, but the fact is that Russian military strength is waning. Waning might be a little too moderate, a little too light, but that's not a lie, and yet Tucker Carlson is going to say it's a lie and it's a crime. In other words, Russia is losing the war. No, that's not what it says. Russian military forces waning does not mean Russia is losing the war. The two, again, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to me that his audience buys into these clear, obvious, logical fallacies. He said waning, and now he's saying losing the war. Those are not the same thing. You can wane and still win. You can wane and be in a stalemate. Why do people listen to this guy? Because they don't, they don't engage, I think, in the critical thinking necessary. And, no, I mean, the real reason people listen to this guy is because he provides them with the kind of intellectual ammunition um, to attack the left. Because, and that's the only thing that matters, attacking the left. That was a lie. He knew it was when he said it, but he repeated Not it a lie. in congressional testimony. That is a crime. But Lloyd Austin has not been arrested for committing that crime. <laughs> Instead, the only man who has yeah. been taken into custody, or likely ever will be, is a 21-year-old Massachusetts Air National Guardsman who leaked the slides that showed that Lloyd Austin was lying. Lloyd Austin was not lying, one. And two, note, he leaked the slides. Did he leak the slides for some, um, uh, you know, some agenda? Was he a whistleblower? No. Did he leak the slides because he was working as a foreign agent? No. He leaked the slides, as far as we know, because he wanted to look like a big man on the block or in Discord. And Tucker has no problem with this. Absolutely no problem with this. He's a 20-year-old who leaked slides that are inconvenient, let's say, to Biden. Therefore, he's a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He's a good guy. He's a hero, just like Marjorie Taylor Greene said. And by the way, as she said, he's white. What was it? White, male, and Christian. M white, male, and Christian. I, I, I included heterosexual, although we don't even know that, but, but white, male, and Christian. So he must be a good guy. How could he be anything other than a good guy? White, male, and Christian, and did something that embarrassed Biden. He should get the Nobel Peace Prize. All right, I want to skip ahead here. I mean, it, it, just uh, he shows clips of CNN going after this kid, justifiably in my view. So this 21-year-old Air National Guardsman from Massachusetts is not a whistleblower, CNN explains, with the help of the many intelligence agency figures it is now hired as analysts. No, he's not a whistleblower. He's a criminal because he... Is he not a criminal? I mean, I find it interesting. Uh, what was Stucker Carlson's position on, on Snowden, who was a whistleblower? And a, and a devastating whistleblower, and a whistleblower for individual rights. But uh, what was his opinion? Well, I don't know exactly what Tucker's was. I can tell you what Trump's opinion was. Hang the bastard. Uh, Pompeo, who is Trump's uh, uh, secretary of state, wanted to hang the guy. Um, you know, Snowden was a traitor, was the worst kind of traitor. Now, maybe because now he lives in Russia, 
they think he's a good guy. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to project what some of these um, uh, people actually think about the world. But Snowden was a whistleblower. I think Snowden was a hero. This guy's not a whistleblower. He doesn't have an agenda. Plus, and maybe he is. We'll find out, I guess. But why is this whistleblower um, good guy? Other whistleblowers, bad guys, is it because that he's embarrassing the left? Yeah, I think so. I think there's only one lens by which these people view the world. Good for the left, bad for the left. He is, unlike the people who run our government, quote, hungry for power. And because this 21-year-old was so hungry for power, federal law enforcement had to swing into action with unfamiliar speed and efficiency and apprehend him. He was that threatening. He was now keep in mind as a time he was distributing secret information. He was distributing top secret documents. I, and what do you what what were they supposed to do? Now I'm very critical of intelligence agencies. I'm very critical about the amount of secrets that we have in this country. But these are top secret documents. What are you supposed to do? Just leave him alone, let him continue doing it, not swing into action, not arrest him. It, 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 it's, um, I, you know, I just, I just want to point these things out just to show you the bias, the, the mentality that is so biased, it, it can't think straight and, 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 and can't really critique him because nobody's critiquing him. I mean, the left is, but the left is wacky. So, so the left critiques him for, for, for this and also for a bunch of other things. And I haven't seen, it, I haven't seen anybody critique him specifically for this. But uh, where's the critics on the right? Where the people basically pointing out to Republicans that this guy is, a, is just a bull-faced liar. That nothing he says should be trusted and believed in. Why is he still as popular as he is? I mean, I have to admit, and, and I don't like saying this, but I have to admit that uh, watching Tucker Carlson and, and, and listening to what he says and knowing how popular he is, is is more depressing, if you will, to me than almost anything else in the culture because it used to be that, they, that, that there was at least some some element of some sanity on the right that opposed the left. But now there's nobody. There's just no sanity. You know, uh, I, I never liked, um, what's his name? The guy who came before Tucker Carlson was the most popular guy um, who left Fox uh, under a cloud of something. But, um, you know, he was bad. He was terrible. Bill O'Reilly, thank you. Bill O'Reilly. I mean, Bill O'Reilly was, was, was terrible that he was popular. But Bill O'Reilly was, was nowhere near, nowhere near as dishonest as, as this guy is. It, there was some little bit of, um, as awful as he was, some little bit of consistency and a certain type of statist integrity to him. This is just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.